during that South Korean anthem two enormous South Korean flags passed over heads on the far side and actually over the heads of the school children away to our right. There's always a little pocket of school children here who are always in the sunshine as well and that's great to see them getting the opportunity to come and see World Cup matches. FIFA though will be very worried looking around this ground. There are scores of empty orange seats and not just in the corporate areas but in what you would call the normal fans areas in inverted commas and great to see during the Argentinian national anthem they were all bouncing up and down the Argentinian fans and right behind Maradona's dugout there are hundreds thousands of them there they're going to make some great photographs in the morning right well South Korea had a very impressive win in their first game so they're going to make it tough for Argentina Robbie Savage is with us Conor McNamara and to start the commentary here's Alistair Bruce Ball Thank you, Mark. I was about to say before those two giant South Korean flags appeared during the Korean anthem that Soccer City Johannesburg looked a little bit more like Buenos Aires. There is an incredible amount of light blue and white uh, draped all around uh, this magnificent ground. Pretty much every balcony of every tier uh, has an Argentina flag all the way round uh, draped across. Plenty of other countries as well, uh, but I think Argentina uh, will certainly feel at home. The South Korean players in their red shirts, white shorts and red socks just in a little huddle in the right hand half of the pitch as we look down. Argentina uh, in the kit you'd probably picture Diego Maradona in uh, when he won the World Cup with Argentina back in 1986. You know the one I'm talking about, the sort of uh, light blue and white vertical stripes, black shorts and white socks. I think in Diego Maradona's day the shirt was a little bit baggier, the shorts were a little bit tighter and I'm not sure in today's modern kits Diego Maradona would cut uh, quite such a, a, a flattering figure, Robbie Savage, because he's, he's put on a little bit of weight. He, he piles himself into that suit. He's got this big sort of shaggy black and grey beard that plastered his face. But you saw the reaction when he came out on the pitch. Not just Argentina fans, but you as well. Just everyone really, really excited about the presence of Diego Maradona. There, was, there must have been a hundred cameramen taking photos of him in the national anthem. The man is just a, a, an absolute world legend. You know, it is a bit of what Maradona wears. Listen, you just can't speak hard enough of the man. Well, we're just about ready to get underway. We should stress ahead of this game that one of these two teams, were they to win it, could actually book their place in the last 16 today. If Argentina win and Greece don't win against Nigeria in this afternoon's kickoff at 3 o'clock your time in Bloemfontein, then Argentina would be through into the last 16. And conversely, if South Korea win and Nigeria don't win in Bloemfontein this afternoon, then South Korea uh, would be through to the last 16 for only the second time uh, in eight World Cups. We are just about ready to get underway. Slight sort of memories of Argentina 78 as well with the sun shining and this Argentina team in that familiar kid I was telling you about and plenty of the Argentina fans throwing up the little bits of paper, the ticker tape, uh, as the anthem was playing. But we're underway and Argentina uh, playing from right to left. Uh, as we look down from this position way, way above the pitch, a real Sabutio feel to it, uh, miles down below us, playing in bright sunshine, just the South Korean penalty area away to our left-hand side, shrouded in a little bit of straight. What a lovely early bit of skill oh, from Angel Di Maria, the Benfica man who comes dribbling inside, beats two players and wins an early free kick. I'll run you through the two team lineups in just a second. No Veron for Argentina today. Uh, he has been replaced by Maxi Rodriguez. And here is Leon, Lionel Messi, immediately surrounded by four red shirts, picked the ball up, skipped away from two of them, and has passed it down to Tevez down the left-hand side. Trying to find Messi again. Park Chi sung in with a tackle, and Argentina uh, win themselves an early corner. We want to see plenty more of that, Robbie Savage. Great start, great tricky from Di Maria. Great tricky from Lionel Messi, they win a corner. Five Live Sport, Argentina nil, South Korea nil. A, a gust of chilly wind blows across the stadium as Messi, the number 10, curls a free kick into the near post. Doesn't beat the first defender. So there's his first tiny little error if we're going to be uber critical, but he could make up for it here. Trying to control a ball on the left-hand side. Does get it down to Aintze, the goal scorer in the first game. He taps it forward uh, and the ball goes out for an Argentina throw. One and a half minutes played. Uh, the South Korean change in the side today is at right back. So uh, Obamsak, who's come into the team in place of Chardu Ri, could have his hands full 
uh, with one Lionel Messi this afternoon. Players built up down the right-hand side. Gutierrez trying to float a ball into the penalty area. South Korea yet really to have a, a proper kick in any proper possession. They've cleared it to the halfway line. Ain't say controlled. He's passed it back to Walter Samuel, and Argentina have started well, Robbie Savage. They started very well, but I can't believe I'm going to actually criticise Messi. And there's nothing more frustrating that we were speaking about last night than the hitting the first man with the corner. It proves even the greatest player in the world at the present time hits the first man with the corner, and that is so frustrating. I'm going to give you the Argentina team with nicknames. They do like a nickname, and I do enjoy this. Sergio Romero's in goal. Jonas Gutierrez, El Galgo, the greyhound at right back. Jimmy Kalis and Walter Samuel, the centre-backs. Gabriel Ainse, the left-back. Javier Mascherano sitting in front of the back four. He's El Jeffercito, the little chief. Maxi Rodriguez, wide right. La Fiera, the wildcat. Angel Di Maria, I've already mentioned. El Flaco, the skinny one. Lionel Messi, La Pulga, the flea. We all know that one. And Gonzalo Higuain alongside Carlos Tevez up front. Higuain hasn't got the best one. He's called El Pipita, uh, which means the little pipe. Uh, and it stems from his father, who was actually a player as well, and he was called the Pipe. Uh, so his son is the Little Pipe, and it leads to the obvious question of a nickname for Robbie Savage. Well, I think my lookalike's probably Barry Gibb. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was once called a rabid Afghan hound by a news reporter who I don't like very much at all. And that's why, I, obviously, because he thinks I look like an Afghan hound. Possibly to do with the, the shaggy hair and the running style. So we have our rabid Afghan hound alongside in the commentary box. Argentina nil, South Korea nil. Here's Ainse driving a ball up the pitch. Tevez jumps in with a meaty challenge to try and get it back. South Korea has seen so little uh, of the football at the moment. Tevez is brought down, picks himself up, uh, gets it to Ainse on the left-hand side, just moving into the little semicircle of shade away to our left-hand side. Oh, it's lovely passing from Argentina. Di Maria tries to get the cross in, knocks it behind for a goal kick to South Korea. Their lineup is as follows. Uh, I don't have any nicknames for them, apart from one, actually. The right-back, Oh Bum Suck, uh, is apparently the king of fouls. Uh, he is known as, so we'll have to watch him this afternoon. Goalkeeper uh, is Jung Sung Ryong. The two centre-backs are Cho Yong Hyung and Lee Jung Soo, who scored against Greece in the first game. Lee Young Pyo, former PSV and Spurs left-back, uh, in that position for South Korea this afternoon. Some recognisable names and figures in the midfield. Lee Chung Yong from Bolton plays on the right-hand side. Park Ji Sung from Manchester United on the left. Uh, Ki Sung Yong, the 21-year-old from Celtic in central midfield, alongside Kim Young Woo and Yom Ki Hun uh, supporting Park Chu Young up front. Uh, he is the, the real goal-scoring threat. Plays his club football for Monaco. Uh, has actually come into the tournament with a bit of a thigh injury, but I'm also told, Robbie, uh, that he has an IQ of 150, so I wouldn't take him on a, a trivial pursuit necessarily, <laughs> if you were thinking of doing that. I wouldn't that. take anybody on a trivial, trivial pursuit. <laughs> Five minutes played. Argentina nil, South Korea nil. I guess the pattern of the game as we expected. Uh, lots of Argentina possession. Diego Maradona uh, filling out that grey suit, arms crossed. He cut such a, an imposing figure standing on the touch. It must be quite daunting, actually, uh, playing for Maradona, knowing what he did and knowing how good he was. Uh, Di Michaelis here is trying to get the ball away to the right-hand side where we find this live little figure of Messi who goes tripping his way along the halfway line. Little bits of paper fluttering around on the pitch below us. Ball fired into Higuain, gets it down, he's offside. Laid it back to Di Maria who was sizing up the shot and South Korea uh, get themselves a free kick. Look at the formation really, it's, you know, the interchange between Messi, Di Maria, Tevez, you know, it's fantastic. The one out now striker is Higuain. You'll find Tevez in his own half, Messi in his own half, and it's, you know, it's, it's, the formation is very flexible. As I said, Greece against Nigeria, our three o'clock kickoff this afternoon on BBC Radio 5 Live. Every game from every ground here at the World Cup 2010. Big game this evening in Polokwane. France against Mexico in Group A. Both drew their opening games. Kicks off at half past seven. Uh, full commentary on that, of course, as well. And South Africa, after their very demoralising defeat last night, I think will desperately want to draw out of that game. Watching this game, by the way, the winners uh, of this group, be that Argentina, possibly South Korea, uh, would meet the runners-up uh, from Group A. So that is France, Mexico, uh, Uruguay, and now very unlikely being uh, South Africa. Tevez lays a nice little pass there into the feet of Maxi Rodriguez. Trying to play a 1-2. Higuain just tumbles over there. And the linesman gives it a real flourish of the flag, but that's only a throw-in, so he's got a little bit carried away with the, um, 
with the gesture and the drum. No, he's given a free. He's given a free kick to South Korea there for Higuain falling over. Well, that's embarrassing. Higuain's <laughs> falling over. He's given a free kick to Korea. Um, but as you can see from the start, Korea, you know, they're happy to to let Argentina have the ball um, deep in their own half. But as soon as Messi or Tevez gets the ball 50 yards from goal, there's four players around each plate. And I think that's what you've got to do against Argentina, just give them no time at all on the ball. Well, they're giving it away here, and Tevez was released by Messi. The ball's coming back to Rodriguez, just passes it out. Higuain goes for the cross, it's over the bar. It's behind for a goal kick. And just suddenly there, Robbie, one tiny little mistake from South Korea, and Argentina were on them in a flash. Yeah, what Korea do want to do today is give the ball away in their own half, because if they do, the pace of Messi, Tevez, Higuain, Di Maria, they'll break at you. And that's what the, these, these international teams do, they... They wait for a chance, they pick the right moment, and as soon as they get the chance, they break in numbers at speed. It's just like you know, like, like Arsenal do in, in, in the Premier League. Long clearance downfield from the goalkeeper, Jung, is headed back powerfully. Uh, Higuain on the turn uh, has fouled Lee Jung-soo, uh, so the free kick will go uh, to South Korea. Just interesting to have a little look at the two managers as well, Diego Maradona and Hu Jung-moo, who must have led... Well, it goes without saying, incredibly different lives. Their paths did cross in the 1986 World Cup when Diego Maradona took Argentina to the win. South Korea played Argentina in the group stages. There is a very famous photograph of Hu jung Mu flying in with a tackle on Maradona, uh, which he got booked for. Um, he's coming in, well, way, way off the ground. I think Diego Maradona said earlier this week it was actually like more of a taekwondo challenge uh, than it was a football challenge. Just wonder if those two have exchanged any words ahead of kickoff today. Argentina nil, South Korea nil. Just eight minutes gone here at Soccer City. Uh, by the way, Robbie, what do you make of Soccer City? Fantastic! It's, it's, it's an unbelievable stadium. You, you, you're so high up watching the game. The, the players look so small, but what, what yeah. a stadium! Lee Young Pyo. Oh, that's a little bit of magic from him. Bit of messy stuff. A couple of step overs on the left hand side, which are, I think the neutrals inside the ground, and certainly the South Korean fans really enjoy. Just giving Argentina a taste of their own medicine. He's won a throw. The South, Kore um, South Korean's coach probably said to Maradona, "Can you sign this, please?" <laughs> <laughs> South Korea have the ball, left-hand side, turning in field, just running across the face of the Argentina penalty, giving it away to a chap called Lionel Messi, and that was a fairly agricultural challenge on Messi. You can expect a little bit of that, I imagine, from any team they come up against. And in fact, uh, it is a yellow card. That is an early yellow card, and it's gone to Yom Ki Hun, uh, South Korea's number 19. And it's interesting, Robbie, because we were hearing the... Uh, the Nigerian defender interviewed after the game against Argentina saying, you know, players like Messi get too much protection. First challenge on him there, first bad challenge, straight yellow card. Well, it wasn't even a bad challenge. Totally, I've got to totally agree with the Nigerian defender. That is true. From, from that instance there, you know, it was a 50-50 really. Just a little, he just, it was a non-entity non challenge really. And he's got books. So I would agree on that, on that situation there, yeah. Nine and a half minutes played at Soccer City. Carlos Tevez makes a little driving run in towards the edge of the penalty area. He's one Argentina... Uh, a throw, Diego Maradona of course heavily criticised during qualifying, first four of his six qualifiers in charge, Argentina lost looked in real trouble as Di Maria crosses in from the left hand side, good ball, Rodriguez jumps, it's headed away from him by Lee Young Pyo who drifted in from left back and the ball has gone out for a, a throw to South Korea on the left hand side but it was interesting to hear Veron say after the opening win against Nigeria Maradona came up with the corner the tactic that led to the Ainsa goal. So all this stick that Diego Maradona's got for being a great player, but maybe not a great coach. And there was Veron sticking up for his man, who actually used to play with him many, many years ago at Boca Juniors. Argentina nil, South Korea nil. Ten minutes played. Argentina just trying to force play down the left-hand side. All Park Ji-sung has been robbed there by Mascherano. Uh, but it's a long clearance downfield from Cho, and it'll come all the way through to the ponytailed Argentine goalkeeper. Uh, who very quickly rolls the ball out uh, from his white and black gloves and finds the feet of Javier Mascherano, uh, Diego Maradona's skipper. Argentina have it right-hand side. Rodriguez came short. The ball was played long for him and over the top. Higuain's been done for another foul there. South Korea get the free kick. Uh, what do you make of the first ten minutes or so, Robbie? Well, I think the, the pattern set for the game. Korea's defending deep. You know, very happy for a point, you know, after the victory in the... Uh, in the, in the first game South Korea beat Greece 2-0 they'll be very happy in for a point, point in this so I think the pan's been set Man of, um, Argentina all the ball all the possession breaking in numbers and I think it's just a matter of time before Argentina get the breakthrough 
Mascherano just hooks the ball over his right-hand shoulder. It bounces high as this ball has been tending to do on these hard pitches, but Argentina have control of it and have possession on the right-hand side, and Rodriguez with the outside of his right boot just dinks a little ball, and your eye is automatically watching this game, just drawn to that little figure, the number 10 Lionel Messi, who's just moving into little pockets of space. Unfortunately there, has given the ball away for Argentina, and South Korea have it on the edge of their own box. Come back to the goalkeeper, Jung, who under a little bit of pressure from Tevez has got underneath the clearance, ain't say jumps just inside the South Korea half, wins the header, and the throw-in goes to South Korea, and look at Diego Maradona's reaction, slamming... Uh, the top of his head with his hand saying how on earth uh, can you give that throw in to South Korea he's going to be great fun to watch and there's a real buzz about watching Messi as well isn't there Robbie yeah listen you know it's just a privilege to be at the World Cup watching you know a great course like Maradona and a fantastic player like Messi it's you know the boy from from Wrexham is is in the same stadium as Messi and Maradona <laughs> it's um it's it's unbelievable really it's, it's just a, such a great spectacle the World Cup and you know, the coverage five live upon is, is, is unbelievable. Yeah, doing our best to give you all the pictures and all the colours uh, because coming uh, to these games, as Mark Pugach was saying right at the top of the programme, it is just like one big fancy dress party, just a fantastic atmosphere between all fans and not just Argentina fans and South Korea fans today, but so many uh, South African yellow shirts you can see around. I can see a Scottish saltire. Uh, down on the lower tier behind that goal away to our right-hand side. Nice little turn here from Park Ji Sung. Ball wouldn't come down for him. Tries a left foot volley. It's actually turned into a decent cross-field pass to the left-hand side. Well read by Rodriguez, the cutback, and he's knocked the ball out for a throw. And this is the only real little bit of pressure, apart from Lee Young Pyo's break down the left-hand side early on, uh, that South Korea have managed to force onto Argentina. Argentina nil, South Korea nil. South Korea playing from left to right across the pitch here the right back O plays it down the right hand touchline uh, it's picked up and crossed into the penalty area by Park Chu Young the striker but cleared away by Argentina and all of a sudden they look very busy and want to get going forward quickly and Angel Di Maria crossing in towards Higuain headed away can Messi get there first sticks a boot in interesting to see who got the final touch on that anyway doesn't go out of play during the goalkeeper collects and South Korea have possession nil nil it's amazing to see these days in this in modern day football how many team, teams play with an out and out defensive midfielder the likes of Mascherano and somebody in the hole the likes of Messi you know loads and loads of teams do it now it just gives a bit of protection for the back four and it lets the one man in the hole express himself and the one who plays in the hole is usually the most technically gifted player in the team you, you see in the Premier League all the time well we definitely saw flashes of Messi at his brilliant best in the first game against Nigeria had the dribbling boots on not quite the shooting boots Rodriguez floating a diagonal pass out to Di Maria on the left hand side little step over from him making his way down to the byline got to be careful here the defender just seemed to have hold of an arm there in the penalty area eventually made the tackle and the ball goes out for a throw there was a danger of conceding the penalty there Bum sucked them well there done very well against Di Maria throw in from eight <laughs> there's a joke there somewhere but I'm not yeah I know it. I know we made the gag very early on I will tell you one very quick lavatory story before this Argentina free kick the lavatorial facilities here at the media centre the doors are on them the wrong way round so when I went in you can't lock it from the inside but someone can lock you in from the outside so you have absolutely no privacy or you can get stuck in there they haven't been particularly well designed so I wouldn't necessarily recommend a trip Argentina nil South Korea nil 15 minutes played on BBC Radio 5 Live first of three World Cup commentaries this afternoon and Argentina have a set piece free kick remember scored their goal against Nigeria from a corner so we'll have worked hard on this as well Messi you want to see a good you want to see a right footer in swinging ball you know Messi's first set piece was poor yeah hit the first man what you're going to see is hit the first man you want to see put it in the area in between the goalkeeper and the back four you know, shoot really, shoot in the position like this. And if it gets a little touch, it goes in. They've got the big men forward, Argentina, and they will have a height advantage over the South Koreans. Rodriguez steps over. Messi curls it in towards the near post. Oh, it's into the back of the net. And it is an own goal. And Argentina have the lead. It's the striker, Park Chu Young, who's put it in at the wrong end. Messi, the creator. It just hit the boot of Park. And the goalkeeper, Jung, didn't have a chance. Argentina lead. 16 minutes played. Argentina won South Korea nil. The ball into the right area, as I said, just before he took the free kick. It was a left footer. He beat the first man with pace into an area where, if he gets a touch, it goes in. He'd done that. I think it's poor defending, really, off the guy. He's hit him on the shin pad. 
gone in, but again, the pace, the delivery of the ball, Messi's first one was rubbish, his second one got him a goal. So two goals for Argentina in this World Cup, and both of them have been set pieces, crosses in an eight header in the first game, and Park Chu Young's shin pad doing the damage there, just hit his right leg. As Robbie Savage told you, Argentina have the lead and they got the bit between their teeth. Here comes Messi, darting in between two defenders. Ball breaks and Rodriguez with the right foot shot is wide and behind for a South Korea goal kick. This is a game I feel which could take the, make the World Cup, you know, come to people's fruition. Now, not, not the boredom World Cup we've seen so far, but the game where we could get a few goals. You know, we, people can express themselves. We can see the best players in the world perform into their capabilities. You know, and hopefully we can see a lot of goals today. Well, I know Argentine fans have very good feelings about this World Cup uh, for various reasons. In 1986, when they last won the World Cup, they scored after six minutes in their opening game. That's exactly what happened here in South Africa against Nigeria. And here come Argentina again with Higuain. He's just trying to find his strike partner, Tevez, but the ball wouldn't sit down for him. There's a nice little bit of skill uh, from the South Korean midfielder. Uh, it's the Celtic lad, Ki Sung Yong, who's fouled, and South Korea get themselves the free kick, and they'll attack uh, down the left-hand side with Lee Young Pyo. Comes back in field to Ki. Might track a long-range effort here. Oh, he's driven one! Just over the crossbar. Romero wasn't sure, went flying away to his left-hand side, but the ball is safely behind uh, for a goal kick. That wasn't a bad strike. What a strike that was, and it... You know, there's been a lot of debate about the ball. The ball's not even moved. It's, he's hit it clean, he's hit it well. You know, if... From all of 40 yards, and the keeper was nowhere near that if, that, if, if it was on target. It's a, it's a fantastic strike. Might have taken just a li little lick of paint off as well. That was very, very close to the top of the crossbar. Tevez trying to cushion a little pass down here in towards Di Maria. Decides to come backways to Ainsa. 18 and a half minutes played at Soccer City in Johannesburg. Argentina leading South Korea by a goal to nil thanks to the own goal. Just looking at their fans all clad in the light blue and white opposite us in the lower tier right next to that touchline nice little turn from Di Maria he's brought down 30 yards out and we may well see from this central position uh, another Argentina strike on goal Di Maria has been very impressive in this in this World Cup so far what he does he interchanges with Messi he gets in that position where he's very hard to pick up in between the lines as we call it you know back at home which means the, the defending back four and, and the Korean middle four you know just in between the lines he's in that middle pocket where he's hard to pick up and what he does he receives the ball on the half turn and then he attacks he attacks and he draws fouls and Messi and Di Maria are doing that exceptionally well so far so a little discussion here between Lionel Messi and Maxi Rodriguez the free kick uh, I would say is probably just about 30 yards out Rodriguez steps over what can Messi conjure up here he comes a little dainty chip with his left foot in towards the penalty area easily caught by the goalkeeper just drifting over the head uh, of Di Michaelis the other omen I was going to tell you about by the way just to finish that little uh, line on Argentina they always tell the story of uh, Brazil taking 24 years to win the World Cup again uh, after Pelé in 1970 is 24 years of course since Diego Maradona who is standing down there in the technical area, uh, led Argentina to victory uh, at Mexico 86. Argentina 1, South Korea 0, an Argentina win. And if Greece fail to win this afternoon against Nigeria, then Argentina uh, will already be through to the last 16, and that would be the perfect start for Diego Maradona. We've just seen an example there of, and just to prove to every young kid at home, everybody who wants to be a, a footballer, Lionel Messi has just tracked back 30 yards, sprinted to win the ball back for his team, and that's Lionel Messi. So it just proves you can be the best player in the world, but that you can substitute hard work. I was going to ask you as well, actually, Robbie, by the way, I mean, I know you've already said you're a big, big fan of Diego Maradona, but where were you? I know you're a football nut and you watch football all the time, and I think you've even got separate television rooms at home, haven't you? Kind of you for the football and the rest of the family for everything else. But 1986, Diego Maradona, hand of God, slaloming through the England defence. Can you remember that? Yeah, I can. I was I was 11 years old, sitting at home with my mother and father in my in my Liverpool pajamas and my slippers and a, and a, <laughs> and a glass of milk, and it was um, it was unbelievable. What that that World Cup from Maradona '96? He won it. I think he won it single-handedly, and you know the goal against Belgium as well. He was 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 tremendous, yeah. and you know although he didn't score in the final, I mean Butacharga scored, and is it Brame Brame he got the winner? So listen, it was at Maradona's World Cup, and 
you know, watching in Liverpool pyjamas was... was <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, a surprising revelation from Robbie Savage. Um, Argentina are getting ready to make a change. Walter Samuel's been down injured on the sidelines, and Badiso, Nicolas Badiso, uh, the Roma centre-back, was warming up. Um, he looked ready to come on. Samuel has picked himself up and said he's OK as a blue balloon just gets blown onto the pitch here at Soccer City. So Badiso uh, will put his training top back on. Argentina leading South Korea by a goal to nil and Ainte scooping a, a clearance forward down the left-hand side. Messi darts in to try and win the ball. He can't. Uh, so South Korea will try and build a move from inside their own half. Lee Young-pyo, uh, the former Spurs man, has it at left-back. Comes back to his centre-back. Uh, another Lee, Lee Jung-soo, who scored in that first game against Greece. They come all the way across the field to Oh Bum Suk, giving the ball away. So Ainte, just a little pass here. Into the feet of Mascherano, who's down on his haunches but still managing to control the ball and comes all the way back to his goalkeeper, uh, Romero. I was just going to say, actually, Robbie, very quickly, the difference between watching Robinho, who actually was very impressive uh, for Brazil the other night but didn't do any tracking back at all, and Lionel Messi, who you were just mentioning, does all that hard work, you know, as well as doing all the attacking stuff. In fact, I'll let Robbie have a little say because we've reached the midway point of the first half. So Robbie Savage will give you his thoughts on the game so far. Argentina leading by a goal to nil. And Conor McNamara will then pick up commentary. Well, going back to your point on, on, on Robinho, I thought you know, when he played in the Premiership away from home for Manchester City, you know, he was a disgrace. It was, his, work, his work ethic was non-existent. You know, it's OK having all the flair and all the ability in the world, but if you do not you know, commit yourself for your team and, and run through brick walls for your team, you, you, won't, you won't get on. And that's why I think Roberto you know, sent him on loan to Santos. So... Well, Argentina have made the change, and uh, Nicola Berdiso, the Roma defender, has come on in place of Walter Samuel. It's been a really good start to the World Cup for Argentina, but I just wonder, with Samuel picking up a knock here, with Veron picking up a knock in the first game, they are two of their most experienced players, as Tevez goes on a dribble into the penalty area, crosses with the outside of the right boot, Higuain attempts a bicycle kick, misses the ball completely, and the South Koreans manage to clear it back towards the centre circle. That was a brilliant run from Messi, close to the halfway line, all the way into the penalty area. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what um, Tevez is good at. You can see his driving runs, he, he keeps room with the boy, keeps it close to his feet, and he's very hard to, to catch, but... You know, going back to your point in the centre halves, that's what I said before the game. If, if they get injuries in, in the middle of the park and, and in the centre half position, they could struggle. Because if I'm Germany or even if I'm England and I see Badiso and, you know, and Di Michaelis, Gutierrez and Heinze, you know, I, I'd fancy my chances against that. Yeah, there seems to be a curse for Inter Milan players for Argentina with Cambiasso and Zanetti left out of the squad and now uh, Walter Samuel. Uh, picking up an injury here in this game but Bordiso has come on he's a very experienced player he's uh, certainly at club level has won an incredible tally of trophies apparently he's won 19 different trophies in his career that's surely a handball off uh, Di Maria the referee hasn't spotted it. he was blindside and the Benfica winger will get to the touchline left hand side swings in across it was low not a bad effort actually if Higuain had attacked the front post but as it is the goalkeeper Jung was able to come and pick up the ball it's Argentina 1 South Korea 0 this is the World Cup 2010 on BBC Radio 5 Live we're in Soccer City in Johannesburg it's very cold but a beautiful day bright sunshine shot from effort from Obam Suck is well off target and you know it's almost uh, for me Robbie one of those classic images of being at the World Cup is watching Argentina play and having the field littered with ticker tape it always seems to happen I think back uh, you know as a kid watching videos of 1978 you could hardly see the green grass it was just all ticker tape well I watched videos I remember Mario Kempes and, and before the game when they were out the ticker tape the, 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 the I don't know what you call them like the, the streamers in the stand by the way what a clearance this from the Argentina goalkeeper and Tevez was almost onto it down the other end it was an enormous clearance that bounced once outside the penalty area the Korean defence seemed to be really hesitant and we know how Tevez loves to chase down even lost causes, he was right on that and the goalkeeper had to come right out to save. Yeah, it was an enormous clearance. Um, We've seen a few of them at this World Cup, you know, goalkeepers really I mean, I, I don't know, not, no great altitude here, but whether the new ball is, is actually helping the goalkeepers with their clearances. Yeah, you talked about that. I think Robert Green, the mistake against USA, his goal kick only just reached the halfway line. So I think that's might have been on his mind when he conceded that goal. Yeah, I've uh, I've had chats with Robbie about this, and, and you reckon that that Robert Green, having not had a good clearance, was actually feeling a little bit worried, and that might have contributed 
to his lack of concentration when eventually the shot bubbled in front of him. Well, we've spoken loads about that already. This is Messi, just outside the penalty area, bundled to the ground once again. And, well, the debate is going to continue. Does he go down easily or are defenders just being extra forceful when they clatter into him? Well, I think you have, you have to be extra forceful with Messi because if you give Messi time and space, he will absolutely destroy you. You have to be physical, you have to be close. You don't want to, you know, be recklessly dirty, but you have to be, you know, against the best players in the world, you have to be physical, and um, that's what I'd do if I was playing against Messi. That's the voice of Robbie Savage watching this game with us here on Five Live, now exposed as a, a lifelong Liverpool fan, just like Sven Joran Eriksson. Uh, we've yet to see a free kick into the back of the net at this World Cup and this could be a promising position for Argentina it's left of centre it's 10 yards outside the penalty area Tevez stands over it so too Mascherano who doesn't have a great record of international goals nor club goals mind you Messi may be the man to strike back heels it for Tevez just over the crossbar he struck it ever so well what's happened there they took a quick free kick so um, Mascherano touches to Tevez Tev um, Mascarano's then run to the guy who's charged him and like physically got to go up against him, hugged him so he can't get through. Tevez is back, he um, Messi's back heeled it, and Tevez has unleashed this extra set that just went over the bar. But it was for me that was a foul from Mascarano on the on the on the one who was charging it. Well, the Argentina players have credited Maradona with the set piece that led to their goal in the opening game. I wonder if he had a little bit to do with that. It was certainly a rehearsed move. And it very nearly paid off for Argentina. As Park Chi Sung for South Korea floats a ball into the penalty area towards Park Chu Young. He's the man who scores the own goal that separates the teams here at the moment. Yum Ki Hyun has it. Angle of the penalty area sends it across towards the center. Park Chu Young does get his head to it, but can't direct the ball on target. It will be a goal kick to Argentina, and their goalkeeper Sergio Romero in the sunshine down away to our right hand side. I think the biggest shot from the Argentinian squad this year, Connor, was the absence of Cambiasso mm. and Zanetti. I know Zanetti, I think he's about 34, 35, 36 now. He's one of them, he's one of them I think. <laughs> he might <laughs> be older. The, towards the upper end of it, I'll get, yeah. I'll get there. But Cambiasso, he's, he's yeah. instrumental into Milan winning the, winning the Champions League and he's not even in the squad. So that, for me, was a very strange decision. Yeah, it might be a bit of a personal issue. Apparently, that happens from time to time. National managers sometimes have personal issues with players. <laughs> this is Messi, up towards Tevez, midway inside the South Korean half. To the left-hand side to Di Maria, tried to return it into Tevez. It uh, came off the shin of a defender. Uh, Korea haven't got it away. Messi has possession, but there's a foul by Mascarano on uh, Manchester United's Park Ji Sung and a free kick to South Korea, uh, about 10 yards outside their penalty area. Argentina lead 1-0. It was an own goal off Park Chu Young. And if you're just joining us here on Five Live, Argentina could be the first team to make it to the second round uh, later on today once we see what happens between Greece and Nigeria. What I like about Argentina is when they, give, when they lose the ball in, the, in Korea's final third, they try and win it back as quickly as they can because they need it to the goal. Lee Chung Young outside the penalty area, in, uh, floats in a ball. He was looking for Park who just couldn't quite control it. Argentina clear it away towards Tevez. Good lower body strength to hold off a challenge and feed it to Messi, whose early ball is intercepted by King, uh, sorry, Kim Jong-woo. And Argentina will pick up possession, and this is Gutierrez of Newcastle on the right-hand side. Up against the fullback, uh, Lee Young pyo formerly of Tottenham. Back into midfield go Argentina. Mascarano onto uh, Messi, onto Tevez. Not a good ball from Tevez, but Messi will regain possession. Little shimmy and a change of direction. And now Di Maria on the left-hand side. And Argentina's passing is crisp here on the smooth surface at Soccer City. Uh, possession on the right-hand side of midfield. Back in now towards uh, Tevez. That's a lovely little drag back. A roll under the studs. Now Gutierrez needs better control than that. Well, Tevez' control was brilliant, and Gutierrez has left the entire move down, and it's a goal kick to South Korea. Yeah, his hair got in his eyes there. Like, you should, it, <laughs> a good trick for him. Put Vaseline in it. That's what I do. You put Vaseline in your hair. It doesn't sting your eyes when it's raining. Okay. It keeps your hair out of your eyes. Obviously, he's got very long hair. But as, as I made my point before the game, Gutierrez and the fullbacks are creating the width. Di, um, Di Maria and Rodriguez coming inside, and Gutierrez is in a great crossing position, but, but messed up. Uh, you must need an awful lot of conditioner in the shower afterwards, Robbie. Stays in for three days, yeah. surrendered. Yeah, not, not two bottles in the shower, just young Hung Cho. 
Uh, here's possession with South Korea at right back, and this is Oh Bum Suk, and he's been closed down by Tevez, and Tevez has kept it in play down by the corner flag, and he falls to his knees, and he gets back up again, and surely he's been fouled now. Carlos Tevez wins a free kick for Argentina, and the two defenders really wrestled him to the ground. Free kick, a crossing position very close to the corner flag. 1-0 to Argentina. This is five live from the BBC at the World Cup in South Africa. And don't forget, coming up later on today, Greece against Nigeria, the afternoon game, and France against Mexico is the evening kickoff. And both those nations awaiting their first victory at this tournament. Again, a great opportunity now to put the ball in with pace. You know, this has to be a right footer with the angle. It's a short free kick, rolled to Lionel Messi, still outside the penalty area, left-hand side, back to Mascarano, now the ball into the area, flicked onto the front post, Beniso, and into the back of the net, and they've scored! It's a second goal for Argentina, they look for the offside flag, but Gonzalo Higuain of Real Madrid has made it 2-0 to the South Americans, and they look a side to watch in this Group B. Argentina 2, South Korea 0. Higuain. Well, you've got to give Maradona credit for these set pieces Argentina are doing. They had a great chance to put the ball into the box like the first goal. They played it short. Messi's played it to, 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 to um, Rodriguez. He's clipped the ball. He's got flicked on. And it was a great header. Poor marking. Poor marking. But it's all come from the free kick. You know, quick, incisive decision making to take the short one. And it's very poor, poor marking there. So... It's a, great, it's a great start, and this is what the World Cup needs, a, a, a good, fantastic performance from a team who, who could be favourites. Well, Mascarano's cross flicked on by the substitute Berdiso, and Higuain of Real Madrid was there to put it into the back of the net. His third international goal, he is a very hot property in world football, and no surprise that Real Madrid, just before the tournament started, tied him down to a new contract until... 2016. Many people were interested in Higuain. Now here's Park Ji Sung for South Korea. Edge of the penalty area runs straight into trouble. Bordiso will clear up towards Messi and there's a foul on Bordiso very late there after the ball had gone. You know, the Koreans, their tackling has been rash to say the least and you know, they're going to start racking up these yellow cards and there's another one shown now and this time it's to uh, Lee Chung Young, the Bolton man. They look overall, they've got no foothold in the game. You know, they can't get near any Argentinian player. You know, I think they're more, more worried about when Messi gets the ball, four players get drawn to Messi. And even if Messi's having an off day, he just draws so many people to leave space for all the other people on the, on, on the, on the pitch. And, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic start from Argentina, but South Korea look out their depth, to be honest. Brilliant atmosphere here inside Soccer City, Johannesburg, and uh, on the far side of the field from us, a huge contingent of Argentina fans. And I, I think of all the games I've been to so far, apart from South Africa as the host nation, I think there's more travelling fans from Argentina inside the stadium at this game than any other nation that I've seen involved in the tournament. There are so many blue and white jerseys right the way around the stadium. Park Song tries to flick the ball into the penalty area for South Korea, and uh, Bardiso was well positioned for Argentina to clear it away. Up towards Messi, and Messi this time is the man committing the foul. It's a free kick to the Koreans, 20 yards outside the penalty area, and Park Ji Song is going to leave it, and he will move forward towards the edge of the box. But uh, Messi, this time, the guilty party on King, uh, Kim Jong-woo, and that will be a free kick. And, and really, you think South Korea, if they're going to get anything back from this game, they'll need a goal back soon. But if I was Korea, I won the first game. I think I would try and go more defensive, just not get beat by any more, just to try and keep your goal different in sack and hopefully win the last game. Because if they win the last game, they, they, they'll go through, I think. So just try and keep your goal difference down to a minimum. But the way the game is going, you know, Argentina can score at will. This is Yom Ki Hyun. He runs over the ball. Park Chu Wong will be the man to take it. And it comes off the back of the calves of uh, Mascarano. And look at him limp. He's felt the sting of that as he just hobbles his way out of the penalty area. And uh, South Korea hold on to possession on the left-hand side with Lee Young-pyo. Tries to work it in towards the edge of the penalty area. Jonas Gutierrez uh, manages to wrestle possession away. And then the last touch comes off a Korean. And that will be a throw into Argentina. Right full-back position for them. The goals, an own goal from Park Chu young And a header from Higuain. And it's Argentina 2, South Korea 0. Messi's in possession. 20 yards inside the Argentina half. Little floating roll that he has. The jersey dangling outside his shorts 
And Bordiso passes to the former Manchester United player Gabriel Ince at left back. Now playing his football in France with Marseille. Had a very good season with them. They won the league and cup double. And he's had a very good World Cup so far as well, scoring the winner against Greece at the weekend. Long ball played forward by Argentina towards the score of their second goal, Higuain. He can't get a touch. Possession won by Messi, close to the halfway line, and then a back heel to Gutierrez. And Argentina looking very comfortable here in possession as Bordiso has it near the centre circle and over to the near side to the number six Ainse on towards Di Maria that's a beautiful flick on to Tevez challenged well from behind by Lee jung Su. at Korea regained possession Obum Sok will chip it over the halfway line straight to Bordiso and the ball retention from the Koreans is not good in midfield yeah it's non-existent they're just getting hurried and hassled out of by, by an Argentina side who are playing full of confidence you know know exactly what they're doing the ball before it comes to them it's just if the, when the Koreans get the ball they haven't got you know, they haven't got options, and what you need as a team is options, and, you know, Korean gets the ball in the park, he, he'll have one option, as, as Argentina will have five or six options, so it's a very difficult game for the Koreans at the minute. It's only the third time these nations have met. Argentina have a 100% record so far, winning two out of two. As uh, Ali mentioned earlier on, the two coaches played against each other at a World Cup before in 1986 in, in Mexico City. And uh, they did play just uh, one friendly game in Seoul in 2003. Tevez rolls a ball in too far in front of Maxi Rodriguez. He'll sprint out towards the corner flag, but he won't be able to keep the ball in play. There was an overlap on for Argentina there, but Tevez uh, overpushed the pass. Yeah, the ball seems to... The weird thing with the ball, when it's in the air, it seems to... doesn't deviate, but when it's on the ground, it just seems to slide and skip through very, very quickly. The pass there looked in once split second it was fine but it just rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled and skipped away the pitches they all look great Robbie they do seem to have cut the grass very very short I mean the ball just it's not a bare pitch but but the ball will skim along it there's no grass to hold the ball up if that was my garden I'd say <laughs> can, you, can you put the blades up an extra inch <laughs> if that was my garden I'd use it as a putting green uh, this is Maxi Rodriguez trying to win possession for uh, Argentina in midfield, but it's uh, well controlled there by Ki Sung Young, the Celtic man, and then a bad ball by Cho Young Hyung. It goes straight out of play on the far side, throw into Argentina. And South Korea, who did impress, you know, you have to say in their opening game, they looked very good. I think maybe the reality is being exposed here as to the limits of their uh, of their achievements in this competition. Well, I think the reality is Greece must be absolutely yes. awful. Yeah, very good point. We will find out later on this afternoon here on Five Life when Greece play Nigeria. Here comes Maxi Rodriguez down the right-hand side. In fact, it's Higuain, sends it across. It's only been parried by the goalkeeper. And now Di Maria, good shot, good save. Went for the top right corner and acrobatically the goalkeeper Jung put it over the crossbar for a corner. Great technique from Di Maria there. The ball's come out to him on the edge of the box. He's took a chest, you know, and he's waiting for the ball to bounce and he's hit it on the rise, you know, dipping volumes, going hit for the top corner. But it's a great save after the, for me, the keeper really should have caught the cross. I saw Di Maria play in Lisbon earlier on this season in the Europa League. Very impressed with him. He's a player who could really make a name for himself at this World Cup. He's already been making a name for himself, of course, with Benfica. Argentina take this corner short. It's not the first time they've taken a set piece short to give it to Messi to let him do what he does best. And he's wriggled into position. Good cross. Tevez tries a flashing header at the front post. Didn't get a firm enough touch on it. But it's all Argentina pressure here as they continue to lead 2-0. Robbie Savage. The balance, the move, and the mess. To see him live in the flesh. This is the first time I've ever done it. And it's you know just a pleasure to witness truly an outstanding talent you know his body movement you know you don't know where he's going it's <laughs> you know it's it's incredible movement yeah the way he leans one way dummies and then goes the same way you know it, it's incredible it, it's it's almost like wizardry and and you look at this argentina team and you wonder how on earth did they struggle as they did in qualifiers and they, they, you know you got to remember this this nation barely made it to the world cup it came down to the the last seconds of their qualifying campaign possession with di michaelis the Bayern Munich defender played in the Champions League final, of course. To his left-hand side is uh, Bordiso. And then Ainse will come up to the halfway line and then play a ball over the top. And Higuain with a little flick that was maybe fancier than it needed to be. He gave it on the instep and it didn't find Tevez. And South Korea will come away with possession. And the colourfully named O Bum Suk on the right-hand side plays a 1-2 in midfield with Ki Sung Young. And then... 
Uh, switching from left to right here is Yom Ki Hun, and he's trying to find a little bit of room, but Obom Suk doesn't have any, and it goes out of play. And that's uh, Robbie Savage giggling like a little schoolgirl. This is, I imagine if you were the change with Obom Suk, it would be some great joy. Almost, I'm not going to say any because you know, this, is, this is Radio 5. <laughs> <laughs> Yom Ki Hun comes through midfield and back out to the right-hand side. Park Ji Sung, the most famous of the South Koreans, the Manchester United man. Oh, Bum Suk has a good bit of movement on the right-hand side. Back to the corner angle of the area. Feeds Park Ji Sung once more. But Argentina defending so well here, denying the Koreans the opportunity to cross. Uh, Park tries a trick, and that was well read. And it was Messi who won the ball there, who's dribbled it up to the halfway line, released Tevez, across comes Lee Jong-soo. Uh, but Argentina win back the ball again by foul means, and that's going to be a free kick to the South Koreans. Interesting to see Messi in a more defensive role there, you know, getting involved in a tackle. And, uh, and winning the ball off the Manchester United player Park Ji Sung. As I said earlier, the best players in the world have the best players in the world. Why are they the best players? Because of their work ethic and their, and their ability to do a bit of magic. Messi's got everything. He has got absolutely everything. And I think before the game, you know, Mark Puga said you want to see Messi come to the fore in the World Cup. And I think today he's showing that. We've been having a debate right the way through this tournament as to what players are world class. Lionel Messi officially in that category for you now, Robbie. Now that you've seen him in the flesh for Argentina, world class without 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 question, absolutely world class. Two nil to the South Americans on Five Live, approaching half time in Johannesburg. We've got just over two minutes of normal time to go, and Messi spinning around in a full circle inside the centre circle and gives it back to Wainsey, and Argentina just so comfortable in possession and Mascarano to Gutierrez and then back into the centre to Bartizo for me though he's, he's the only world class player in the Argentinian team you know that could be a big debate but you look around there's some great players on show there's some good players but oh, the only world class one I think is Messi and I think there's only you know probably two world class players in the tournament for me Messi and Rooney and, just and, to, and Ronaldo so three just to confirm it listeners who, who might have listened to Robbie on 606 there are very firm restrictions on what you can describe as world class and uh, I think the basic rule is they have to fit in the same sentence as Maradona, Pele and Zidane. And if you can say Messi and it sounds OK in that, in that company, then they are world class. But no point just being a very, very good player or even a great player. Now, this is Tevez, who's probably in the great player category. Into Messi, brilliant feet on the edge of the area, around four defenders, and chips it just wide. <laughs> that would have been one of the World Cup goals. We've been building him up, and he very nearly delivered. Messi had, was surrounded. Five or six defenders, he beat them all, and tried to lob the goalkeeper from the edge of the penalty area. Well, it's just his movement. He's let the ball run across his body. He's chipped back inside. You know, he's tried an audacious chip against against the goalkeeper. But the chip wasn't that good, to be fair. It was it was quite a way away, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> not not that good, Lionel Messi. The chip, the chip wasn't that good. It was, a, but it was unbelievable technique. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. The, the head of sport and see if I can follow Argentina around this world. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> really. I mean, the tickets will become the hottest property to see this team now. And you know, I think we'll be telling our grandchildren that we saw Lionel Messi play in the flesh at a World Cup. Just everything seems to go into slow motion when he has the ball at his feet and he can spin and turn and somehow always find some space. What a season he's been having! 47 goals in 53 games for Barcelona it has been a long season for him but the legs do not look tired here in South Africa more from Robbie Savage in just a moment 2-0 to Argentina but a free kick to South Korea here is a long way out they go for goal low along the ground straight into the wall and sums up the sort of lacklustre uh, performance from the Asian side that we've seen so far here's you know who on the ball surrounded by two defenders this time they get it off him and uh, Obam Suk will turn and roll it back to the goalkeeper and Jung Sung Ryong will clear long and over the halfway line and towards the striker Park Chu Young. He's the man whose own goal has separated the team. But this is Young who will beat the goalkeeper. It's terrible defending by Argentina and South Korea have got one back. Young Ki Hun, the midfielder. He's been booked earlier on in the game. But he showed great awareness there. And the finish, similar to Steven Gerrard's for England. Little dink of the outside of the boot. And he has beaten Romero. And Argentina, for all their tricks and all their fancy football, have conceded their first goal at South Africa 2010.
as I said before, the danger is right on half time. The half time was just goals. The danger is Argentina in the middle of the, in the middle of the defence. That's the weakness shown there. Poor defending by Di Michaelis there. Hesitate on the ball. You know he's trying to clean it. It's hit against the guy and he's and he's put it in the net. Well, what a first half we've had. Two and goals in front. Argentina seemingly cruising towards the second stage. And with quite literally the last kick of the first half, Yong Ki Hyun has flicked the ball away from Sergio Romero, the Argentinian goalkeeper. But I think the Argentina defence will be so upset they hadn't put a foot wrong for 45 minutes and stoppage time at the very end. Undoubtedly, a huge error has contributed to that goal. It's a great first half, great attacking play, you know, great balance, great poise off of Messi. The work rate at Tevez, but again. The defensive thing, as I said before the game for Argentina, that is the biggest worry for me with Argentina in this competition. They've they've won attack, Korea, and they've scored against two poor centre halves. It was Di Michaelis of Bayern Munich who made the mistake. Diego Maradona, obviously an attackingly minded coach, he's picked six strikers in his squad. But will it be his defenders, Mark Pugac, that that caused the problem in the long run? Half time here, gotta say I am loving this. It's Argentina two, South Korea one. Thank you guys, we're about to start again here. Alistair Bruce Ball, great to watch Argentina, but two headers and one own goal so far on their tally in this World Cup. Very strange that I think we almost had the goal of the tournament in the first half, Mark, as the second half gets underway. The little bit of messy skill that threw about three defenders on the edge of the penalty area. And just as he hit the chip, even as a neutral, you're willing that ball into the back of the net because it really would have had everyone on their feet. Just drifted wide. Argentina lead 2-1 right at the start of this second half. They were absolutely coasting in that first half. Uh, got their two goals, one own goal and a Higuain header at the far post with some poor South Korean marking in defence. But Di Michaelis' lapse in concentration has suddenly given us an interesting second half. Messi with an early curler from the edge of the penalty area is blocked. South Korea have made a change at half time. Uh, Kim Nam Il, who is a defensive midfielder, uh, has come on. And he has replaced uh, the 21-year-old from Celtic, uh, Ki Sung Yong. Now, he's an attacking midfielder, uh, so he's come in to do a holding role, Kim Namil. You know, I was enjoying my nicknames in the first half. He's known as the vacuum cleaner because he hoovers <laughs> everything up uh, in front of the back four. Balls in the Argentina penalty area. They lead by two goals to one. A little bit scruffy at the start of this second half, but they have possession now, Argentina, in the light blue and white vertical stripes, black shorts and white socks, and they're attacking from left to right as we look at it. Robbie Savage. I might take that guy home with me, because my and to my wife, because my wife doesn't know what a vacuum cleaner it is. <laughs> Here comes Higuain into Messi. Here's a chance for Messi. Gets the shot away. It's blocked, and it is behind for an Argentina corner. I thought we were just about to see Lionel Messi's first World Cup goal in 2010. Now, alluding to the point you made before about Argentina's three goals have come from two headers and, and, and an own goal. It doesn't matter how you score goals in this World Cup. In fact, it doesn't matter how you score goals in any game of football. If, if it goes in the back of the net, it's a goal. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be five overhead kicks or five long-range strikes. A goal is a goal, so it doesn't matter how you score them. Argentina had to make a change in the first half as well. Uh, Walter Samuel, the Inter Milan centre-back, went off injured, replaced by Roma's Nicola Berdisso. I'll run you through the two full lineups just as soon as I can. Rodriguez curls the corner in. It's headed high in the air, dropping down on the penalty spot in the South Korean box. Volley is driven in, but rather miscued there on the edge of the penalty area by Lionel Messi. And the ball goes behind for a goal kick. So here are the two team lineups. Argentina have the ponytailed Sergio Romero in goal. A back four of Gutierrez, Di Michaelis, who made the mistake right at the end of the first half to let Bolton's Lee Chung Young in to score, alongside Badisso and Ainsay at left back. Mascherano in front of that back four with Rodriguez and Di Maria ahead of him on the right and the left. Lionel Messi uh, buzzing in and around behind Higuain and Carlos Tevez. South Korea have Jung in goal, uh, a back four of O. Oh. Cho, Lee Jung Su and Lee Young Pyo, the left back you'll recognise him uh, from his days at Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, the two holding midfielders, number eight, Kim Jung Woo and the substitute, the vacuum cleaner who Robbie wants to take home with him, Kim Nam Il Lee Chung Yong, the goal scorer plays uh, in the midfield alongside Park Ji Sung and Yom Ki Hun and Park Chu Young the striker uh, who scored at the wrong end 
uh, from South Korea's point of view. He with the own goal that gave Argentina their early lead. Little bit of skill here from the goal scorer, Bolton's Lee Chung Yong. Uh, has brought down, was he? No, I thought he made a meal of that, actually. He went down rather dramatically uh, inside the Argentina half. Gets nothing for it. And Lionel Messi comes buzzing back in, picks the ball up. Just has it tied to the laces of his left boot and delivers the pass. And now here is Gutierrez from Newcastle. Uh, playing in South Africa, Soccer City. Home, of course, to the opening game. Uh, South Africa against Mexico, that fantastic opening goal from Shabalala. Host, of course, to the final as well, uh, Soccer City. Bright sunshine, bracingly cold day. Higuain is offside. And because of the way the sun moves here in this big sort of ringed roof, uh, the shadow gets ever greater across the stadium. almost looks as though the roof is closing uh, above us as this sort of semicircular shadow uh, moves up across the pitch. A fair few empty plastic orange seats, a really dramatic stadium, certainly from the outside as you approach uh, towards the southwest of Johannesburg, just this huge cauldron looms up in the distance, uh, built upon the site, a sort of improved uh, old stadium, this huge membrane, this big skin has been built up around it. Some actually, Robbie, have rather unkindly sort of described it as a, as a huge kind of block of flats, because on this sort of red, grey skin, there's loads of little openings, like look like little windows, but I know you're a big fan. I thought it looked like a spaceship, but what spaceships? It's like, I don't know, but it does look like a no, but what was that film when that big spaceship landed? You know, there's like the James Bond film at the end. Yeah, or well, plenty of films. Um, here's Carlos Tevez, edge of the penalty area. Higuain trying to get the ball away. Rodriguez, the ball just hits him on the left knee. Messi gets it down to Tevez. Tight angle here. Tevez tries to drive the shot in. It's blocked. Uh, and then knocked away for a throw-in by Lee Yong pyo Throw-in to Argentina. Five minutes gone in the second half. And Argentina lead by two goals to one. For the neutral, the, the Korean goal coming just at the perfect time. 2-1. It's, 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 it's a good game, actually, today. One of the best games I think I've seen this tournament. Yeah, we're enjoying it. Here's uh, Gutierrez, who's a, a lanky figure playing at right back. Again, another man with a ponytail in the Argentina side. Ball here for Rodriguez to chase. Can't keep it in. The ball drifts behind. Funny enough, Robbie, people have talked about... You know, Argentina's attacking prowess. The problem may be defending and the, and the goals they may concede. They may not be strong enough. But that, was, that wasn't actually anything to do with Maradona's organisation. That was just a basic human error from Di Michaelis, wasn't it? Yeah, we can see you, when you make errors on a football field, you know, a goalkeeper, obviously Robert Green's error cost a goal. No, no matter where you play, if you make an error, a, a diabolical error like that, like Di Michaelis just done, it can cause a goal. And that's what's happened there. So... You know, you've got to feel sorry for defenders and, and goalkeepers, but the, to be fair, it's all about concentration at this level. Just wonder as well how Maradona's man management is when things aren't going quite so well. Uh, could definitely see the anguish on his face uh, when the goal went in. You just wonder how he dealt with that in the dressing room. And it will be interesting to see when Argentina do come under pressure, possibly later in this tournament, uh, how he reacts. Because I think it's certainly fair to describe him as a fairly volatile character. Might be enjoying this, though, because here's Rodriguez chipping the ball across the face of the South Korean penalty area. Tevez, lovely little dink ball through. Di Maria in, and Higuain's shot is just turned around the post and behind for a corner. Beautiful, flowing football from Argentina and very nearly a third goal. Di Marie has been exceptional so far this game. You know, he's picked out Higuain there. It's a fantastic save from the keeper who's chipped over the bar. Now, that's happened because Korea can't clear their lines. You know, and it's just the pace and the movement of the front three or four for Argentina that caused them all sorts of problems. It's, you know, it's, it's fantastic play. But the keeper's done actually very well today. He made some good saves. Lionel Messi is just lazily waltzing his way. Our commentary box has fallen apart. We've got a chap in front of us here who's desperately trying to mend the commentary box. A big white hoarding in front of us is clattered down. I didn't kick it, by the way. No, you didn't. No yellow card. Messi into the uh, near post again. I'll tell you what, that wasn't the best corner either from Mr. Messi. I'll tell you Messi. what, Messi's rubbish. <laughs> World class in the first half, but no, that was poor delivery from Lionel Messi. Here come Argentina again. Di Maria darting in from the left. Tevez just trying to lay it back, and flag was up for offside, so South Korea will get a chance to clear their lines. Lionel Messi is the front man. He's, he's, had, he's had three set pieces. Okay, he's created a goal from one, but the other two, he's at the first man, which is so frustrating. So that proves to me that this has to be something wrong with the ball. Because okay. people keep hitting the first man. In this, at this level, surely you should, you know drive it or do something different ball travels absolutely miles through the air we are at altitude here but the uh, Korean goalkeeper just whacked one all the way down the field and also the point you made as well Robbie in the first half in terms of the, the ball uh, bouncing so high off these pitches but the one that rolled away from Rodriguez in the first half it looked like one of those putts at Augusta which suddenly catches a slope and boom and you, ju you just thought he was going to get there and it just went it just, it just disappeared from him 
Yeah, there's <laughs> Romero with a, a long clearance downfield. Little chuckle from Robbie Savage. With us at Soccer City this afternoon. Eight and a half minutes played. And here's Tevez who picks the ball up on the left-hand side. To the corner there. Flashes a shot in. It's parried away. South Korea struggling to clear. Eventually they do so via two of their defenders. Nice little flick on from Park. Trying to pick up the uh, the run is Yom. He's pushed off the ball there by Gutierrez, who then very cynically throws it away. And the referee, Frank the Blakerer from Belgium, is having nothing of that. And that is a booking for Gutierrez. And that means he is out of Argentina's final group game. Now, that may not matter because they may well get through uh, into the last 16 today, depending on what happens between Greece and Nigeria. Booked in the first game, booked in the second game. He misses the third game, and, and rightly so, Robbie. Chucked it away, didn't he? Yeah, but that's, to, be, to be fair, that's a good booking from Gutierrez. He'll know now we'll miss the next game, which they'll be through anyway, I think. So, you know, at least he'll be available for the last 16 match. Oh, it's the cynical professional yeah. sitting next to me. Free kick floated in the area. Romero comes a long, long way. Here's Kim Namil outside the area, hits the left foot shot, blocked on the edge of the box. A left foot volley scuds in, and now it's Park. Korea's number 10 inside the Argentina box, trying a few tricks and then just left the ball behind. That's a bad tackle on Kim Namil from Mascherano. Mascherano is writhing around in agony, but immediately the referee has hoisted out the yellow card. He's going to get booked as well, and Argentina are under a little bit of pressure. They lead 2-1. What Mascherano's doing there is trying to con the referee. He's trying to make out he's badly hurt there. And I've seen that from Mascherano a lot in the Premiership last year. You know, getting little ch challenges, you know, going down far too easy, trying to con the referee. For me, that is a, that is a bad challenge for Mascarano, uh, yeah. and rightly so booked. And you know, he's got up. You know, he's he's writhing around in so much pain there. But he, as soon as he gets booked, he gets up and gets on with it. Um, I'm not I'm not the, one of these people who you know would stay down and make a meal of things. You should, I think you should get up. <laughs> this is this is the great thing about having Robbie Savage with us, of course, on commentary because a couple of seconds ago. There you are, saying sort of the, the cynical pro's view. You knew exactly what Mascherano was doing there and talking about picking up the yellow card, which was, was good news as well, uh, because Gutierrez misses possibly uh, a, a kind of meaningless game. Anyway, free kick for South Korea. This could be problems uh, for Argentina. Park Chung Young, the striker, kills it in wide and behind for a goal kick. In fact, it took a flick off the wall, uh, so it's gone behind uh, for a corner to South Korea in their bright red shirts, white shorts, red socks, and just having a little bit of joy at the moment, Robbie. Very good, very good start to the second half from Korea. I know Argentina have had two chances, but they've put a bit of pressure. I think, I think they now think they can get something out of the game. Yom Ki Hun uh, will take the corner for South Korea from the left-hand side. The yellow flag fluttering in the breeze beside him. It's headed away from the near post. Tevez will bring it down on his chest. Immediately a swarm of red shirts around him. He's, he's lost the ball, but he's been fouled. Uh, so Argentina will get the free kick. Argentina lead by two goals to one. Three o'clock kickoff this afternoon. We heard from uh, David Oates and David Pleat. They'll be watching the other game in this group. Greece versus Nigeria in Bloemfontein. Half past seven tonight. We have France against Mexico uh, in Polokwane. And tomorrow, of course, England are back in action in Group C. 7.30 Cape Town. Full commentary. England against Algeria. Nicky Campbell on the breakfast programme from tomorrow morning in Cape Town uh, from six o'clock in the morning uh, ahead of that game. Argentina 2, South Korea 1. Uh, our lunchtime commentary from the World Cup on Five Live this afternoon. And, Robbie, actually, you've been quite strongly critical of the football we've seen uh, so far in the World Cup. Little bit more on this game. And as you say, it's, it's been a better game. Yes, what you want to see is the best players in the world performing to the, to the, to the level, showing a bit of flair, showing a bit of skill, because that's what you want to see in, 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 in any competition. Now then, break here for South Korea, driving right at the heart of the Argentina defence. The ball is played in behind Argentina, and it's struck just wide into the side netting. It was a fantastic opportunity, which Yom couldn't take. They absolutely sliced Argentina apart there, built the move from the halfway, and that was a lovely slid pass from Park into Yom, in at the near post, stabbed it with his left foot, just wide, could so easily have been 2-2. Defensively, Argentina are a shambles. They've got no idea how to defend. They've got Heinze, Gutierrez, Badisu has come on. You know, it's a quick break from Korea. You know, he should have scored. He's tried to hit it with the outside of his left foot, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and he shanked it wide. He should have scored, and Argentina look all over the place at the back. But up front, they're always dangerous. Higuain with a cross in, it's blocked, and the ball goes behind for a corner. You wonder why he went for the near post there, Robbie. I just thought a sort of classic on refinish, open the body up and try and curl it Yeah, but it was, his, it was his body shape. He's, he's running on an angle. He's, he's obviously left foot. He's tried to, like, bend it. He's got to open his body up. Yeah, you're... 
You're right there. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the summarizer here? Jimmy's a commentator. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, you take over. Maxi Rodriguez and Lionel Messi getting ready to take the corner for Argentina. Really enjoying this second half. The game has totally turned round. Argentina still lead 2 1, but they're just under a little bit of pressure. Rodriguez with the corner, header over the bar from Ainse. It came at him fast, he couldn't control it. It was from the six yard line, uh, but he's ballooned it up and over the crossbar. So, I guess we've seen both sides, haven't we, of Argentina, this fantastic attacking talent, but other teams who may meet them later in the competition will be licking their lips at the last sort of 15 minutes or so defending. Yes, it's all good signs for the people who are going to play in the later stages, you know, defensively. You know, Gutierrez, a right back, who I don't think is a right back. You know, they've lost Samuel now. So, yeah, oof, and they might have lost Heinz here. Oh, that was a strong challenge from Bolton's Lee Chung Yong on Ainse. Uh, they jumped. I think Ainse's taken a whack on the back as he fell. Just jumped into him, really. Caught him in the ribs. Down they went. Ainse's a, a tough old cookie, though, actually. He's, he's picked himself up, and, uh, and play will continue. So, Argentina leads South Korea uh, by two goals to one. Wind is definitely picking up. Uh, around Soccer City Diego Maradona who hasn't really moved from the edge of his technical area for the entire game in the grey suit with the jet black hair just falling gently onto the onto the shoulders of the suit has his hands in his pockets must be rather chilly down there I think headed forward here by Gutierrez uh, South Korea trying to play out of defence of giving the ball away Gutierrez just stabs a little pass out to Rodriguez on the right hand side back to Gutierrez his message is going to try and make things happen from a little bit deeper uh, plays the ball back to Mascherano. Remember, he's now on a yellow card for that challenge. Across field to Ainse. Pinged back into the feet of Mascherano. Just a little 10-yard pass from him. Uh, comes across to Di Michaelis, to Gutierrez. Lots of possession for Argentina here. Now, here's the man who really can make it happen. Messi on the turn, clipping a ball forward. Couldn't find its target. Gutierrez comes in and blocks. And it's well applauded by the South Korean coach, Hu jung Mu, who'll be delighted uh, with the way South Korea... Uh, are playing, gifted their goal just before half-time. They are now right back uh, into this Group C game. Here's the uh, the substitute, Kim Nam-il. Just a little pass into his back four. A long ball forward aimed towards the striker, Park. Gutierrez facing his own goal, heads up in the air. South Korea pick up the loose ball. Park Ji-sung, haven't mentioned his name too much in the second half of Manchester United. Back to Kim. Kim with just a little sideways ball. Now in towards the feet of Park. Comes back for a strike on the edge of the box from Kim Jung-woo. One of the other central midfielders. It's blocked. Oh, then trying to slide in a pass down the right-hand side. In behind the Argentina defence. But the run was covered. And the ball drifts behind for a goal kick. 15 minutes gone. Argentina lead 2-1. But, well, South Korea uh, have, have got a chance in this game. Well, I think the change they've made with Kim number 5 coming on just to screen the back four has made, a, has made a huge difference. I think he's nullifying the threat of Messi. We've not heard of Messi this half at all. He's, um, you know, number five's Kim has, has, has changed the dynamic of the team and it, it's given the Korea the basis to, to do attacking, you know, get attacking players forward. World Cup football on Radio 5 Live this Thursday afternoon. Some racing from Ascot to come as well. The, uh, the big race, the Gold Cup, we're hearing from Cornelius at halftime. 10 to 4, your time back home. The US Open Golf. Uh, starts today as well at Pebble Beach. I think play will get underway about 3 o'clock your time, so we'll keep you right up to date with that as well as Messi chips a ball into the South Korean penalty area. Higuain with a little nod down. Here's Messi again, trying to turn, trying to get away from two defenders. Just couldn't bundle his way past both of them. Messi comes in to help. The ball is hacked away, and it is out for an Argentina throw, which uh, Gutierrez gets ready to take. In terms of him being suspended for the next game, one change for this World Cup just later in the tournament, the yellow card amnesty uh, is drawn at the quarter-final stage, so if you pick up a yellow card in the semi-final, you'll already ready be clear from ones earlier in the tournament, so you won't get the sort of Paul Gascoigne situation uh, from 1990 when England obviously didn't make it to the final, uh, but he would have missed it anyway. Huge roar goes up <laughs> around Soccer City because the ball drifted out of play for a throw-in and Diego Maradona... <laughs> With the back heel of his left shiny patent leather shoe, just a little bit of control. <laughs> He's absolutely deadpan, but the fans absolutely loved the little touch from the great man. Class, he's got Winkle pickers on, he's brought it down on, on the Winkle. <laughs> absolutely just fantastic. <laughs> and looked cool as you like as he did it as well. Diego Maradona, his team lead by two goals to one. Robbie Savage uh, enjoying that with us on Five Live this afternoon. But South Korea causing Argentina just a few problems here. Coming forward, Park Ji-sung fires the ball here uh, into the feet of 
Lee Chung Yong, the goal scorer. Oh, the right back down the right hand side. Some nice little patterns being built. And here comes South Korea in behind again. Couldn't control the pass, could Oh. The right back had got in behind. And the ball goes behind for another goal kick. But they've been better going forward in the second half, Robbie. Yeah, great run. Get great run from Bum Suck. And he got in behind then. It was a fantastic run. Um, you know, and the ball again is slipped away. It took the bounce. It's the. <laughs> I don't know if it's the pitch, the ball, the wind, yeah. what is it, but it just seems the first bounce, it just skips on. The other great line I enjoyed from Diego Maradona and his coaching team ahead of this World Cup was they said it would be OK for the players to have sex with their wives or their girlfriends, but not their mistresses. That wouldn't be the right thing to do. And no champagne and cigars either. So he's laid down the law there, very hard and fast, as Messi comes forward. Into the feet of Higuain. Here's Messi on the turn, just trying to flick a little ball through to Rodriguez. But there were two South Korean defenders there to block. But they've given it away. Ainsey's going to come in. He's well tackled. The ball... Well, actually, I didn't think... I thought Ainsey jumped the challenge there and wasn't caught. But the free kick has been given. And it's right slap bang in the middle of the South Korean half. Argentina want to go quickly. Not allowed to by the referee. Uh, so we'll come back for an Argentina free kick. They lead by two goals to one. So Maradona was see serious about the point he made there, or was, yeah. it, was it tongue-in-cheek? No, it wasn't tongue-in-cheek. He was saying that's Because, you know, I, th I think some coaches will say, you know, with the whole wags thing, we don't want them anywhere near, etc., etc. And some athletes will say, you know, having sex before a game is a good thing or a bad thing. But he's saying it's OK as long as it's with your regular partner. I think that's the kind of rule in the Argentina camp, so... Oh, it's oh, Fair play, then. <laughs> Argentina 2, South Korea 1, and Diego Maradona stands arms crossed and uh, waits to see what Argentina, his team, can do with the free kick. Messi's going to curl one into the box, bounces all the way through, keeper gets down, makes a fairly comfortable save, actually, uh, because no one got a touch on the ball. I was going to say, actually, Robbie, for the, uh, for the second Argentina goal, Higuain's header, I do wonder whether the keeper could have done a little... I know Higuain was unmarked and the header was downward. I thought the keeper might have done a little bit better with that, but here comes South Korea again, up towards the edge of the Argentina penalty area. Lee Chung Yong is tackled on the edge of the box, and now, look, here's space for Argentina to work, and Messi is in acres of space, he's running down the middle of the pitch, but the ball is just too far ahead of him, so Lee Young Pyo will cover it, he's trying to get back to his keeper, Messi cleverly won't let him, then comes nibbling it in his ankles, fouls him, and waves his arm in frustration, and then gives that classic sort of Latin American shake of the hand with the fingers clenched together to the linesman as if to say... You haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Well, I think Higuain took the wrong option. It was three on two. Tevez brought one way, Messi the other. He's tried to put Messi in. You know, Messi got beat for pace there. But, you know, Messi's made four or five fouls, little niggling fouls yeah. this game. And, you know, the referee hasn't even spoken to him. So there may be a point that, you know, because it's Lionel Messi, if that was a masquerade of, of a player of a, a different ilk, you know, maybe the referee would speak to him. He's made four or five niggling little fouls, but he's not, not, not out of talking to Argentina 2, South Korea 1. The South Korean keeper gives the ball a mighty thwack downfield. Park can't control it, so the ball will go straight behind for a goal kick. That sounds like a sort of frustrated, aggressive midfielder, Robbie Savage talking about. These talented playmakers are allowed to kick you and get away with it. Yeah, I think, I think, that, I think that's a fair point. I think they do. I think, you know, you look at... You know, Ronaldo got but the other night. That was that was unfairly so, I think. But the the seem the, the the playmakers and the more talented people, you know, seem to get let off more than the, you know, the aggressive, tough tackling midfielders defenders. And I think that's that's how it is. Argentina with Di Maria. I haven't mentioned his name much in the second half either. Just not able to quite get the same rhythm. Argentina in this second half. I mean. As we coasted towards half-time, Argentina looked absolutely home and hose, leading by two goals to nil and possibly heading through to the last 16. They do still lead, but the Di Michaelis mistake, if you have just tuned in, totally fell asleep inside his own penalty area. Ball nicked off him and Lee Chung Yong from Bolton stabbed home. And that's why this game is still right in the balance. And here come South Korea in the sunshine. Park Ji Sung missed control, then just actually ran into Gutierrez, but has won the free kick. And South Korea will take this... Uh, inside the centre circle. The substitute, Kim Nam-il, just side-foots a, a little ball to his centre-back, Cho. Just a bit more space for South Korea to operate in, in in this second half. And probably feeling a little bit more confident as well uh, with the joy they've had getting through and that wonderful chance for Yom, uh, which unfortunately stuck into the side netting. Ball played forward, knocked out of play by Lee. We've reached the midway point of the second half as two blue Argentina balloons dance around inside the Argentina half. They lead by two goals to one, but I think a very interesting 20 minutes or so to come on Five Live. Conor McNamara will talk you through it. Yes, thanks very much, Alistair. For 45 minutes, Argentina dominated this, but since South Korea scored in injury time before the break, 
it's been a much, much closer contest. And uh, you just wouldn't put an equaliser beyond the Asian team at the moment. By the way, if it did finish 2-2, it would be the first time that Argentina had drawn a game under Diego Maradona. It's been all either wins or defeats. Cotter dry. Messi takes the free kick short. Near the halfway line, exchanges a pass with Di Maria. And Ainse plays it into Tevez, but he's still midway inside the Korean half. Put a space here for Gutierrez, who will miss the final group game for Argentina. Having picked up two bookings now in his first two games, the Newcastle man on the ball again. And he's uh, fed it in to Maxi Rodriguez, up towards Tevez. Tevez tackled from behind, but the referee says that's a fair challenge. And he says play on, and Kim Nam-il will come over the halfway line, and he's played a pass way too powerfully. It was intercepted by Ainse. I think if Ainse hadn't touched that ball, it would have just kept going all the way into the crowd. But Argentina have kept the ball alive. They lead 2-1. And they move back into the Korean half with Lionel Messi, who's floated a left-footed pass onto the instep of Maxi Rodriguez. Just outside the penalty area. Right-hand side, low ball into Higuain. The shot was on target, but no power behind it. Robbie Savage. It's become a very open game now. It's, atta it's you attack us, we attack you. It's been, um, it's been a highly competitive game. It's been a very good game. It's, Korea's now sense that they can get the equaliser, and I wouldn't put it past them. Here come Korea with Park Ji Sung, the Manchester United man. And uh, with him is Kim Ju Woo. And a shot will eventually come in. He was off balance as he struck it. But it did take a deflection. And that's going to be a corner uh, for the Koreans on the right hand side. By the way, um, Argentina's Gutierrez and Park Ji Sung could be up against each other in the opening day of the season. Manchester United will face Newcastle on the first day of the Premier League. Uh, Chelsea will play West Brom, another of the promoted sides. And David Moyes last night told me, he, he, he just said, I bet you we're going to get a team beginning with B. And he's right, Blackburn against Everton. So he knows something. Here comes a corner from the right-hand side. And it's punched by Romero, the Argentina goalkeeper. Gets really good distance on it. Out of play. And a throw into Korea, which they take quickly. And uh, Lee chung Yong is... Well, he seemed to have a bit of space. Ainte came out very quickly to close it down. That last touch came off the Marseille defender. And that's another throw into the Koreans. And again, they take it quickly. And this is Yom. And a little bit of space for him maybe to cross as he tries to get it onto his left boot. He took a lot of time on the ball and Di Maria was able to take it off him. This is Tevez up towards Higuain who's touching the uh, touchline on the left-hand side. Gives it back to Tevez in the sunshine as the shadow begins to creep over two-thirds of the pitch here in Johannesburg. And Mascherano back inside the Argentina half, steadies himself, studs on the ball and a short pass to the left to Ainse. And Korea trying to close down the options here as it's Di Maria and now Tevez. And he's so hard to wrestle off the ball. Sorry, that's not Tevez. That's was that Eagle Wayne over there. But he's so hard to wrestle off the ball as well. And eventually it will be possession back to Argentina. I also seen David Moyes in the hotel last night. And the first question I asked him was, why didn't he ever buy me for Everton? <laughs> yeah, you see, he does have a good good record in the transfer market, doesn't he? He, yeah. tried, he, tried he makes me. the right decisions. He tried he? to buy me twice, you know. <laughs> There, there is definitely more to discuss on that topic, but might now probably not the time. As Argentina attack down the left-hand side, Ainsay goes to ground, play on, says the referee. Chance of a counter-attack here for South Korea. Lee chung Young of Bolton. Bit of space on the right-hand side, but again, he can't deliver a decent ball towards the front men. The ball does go out, though, for a Korean throw, and it's taken quickly to Yom. Back to Lee chung Young, And again, they're very slow at delivering the cross into the penalty area. Park, though. Uh, now maybe tees one up for Kim Nam-il. And he'd very little composure and it's at least 10 yards wide to the left-hand side. But they're creating chances, you've got to say that for South Korea. Yeah, I think this Argentinian side is basically all attackers and the, the defensive side of the game is, is non-existent. Listen, you would not be worried attacking this Argentinian team. You would be worried defending against them. But Korea have had few, three or four good opportunities. I think the guy picked the wrong option then. He should have gone wide because the guy was in... I'm not going to pronounce the names, I'll, I'll let you pronounce the names. The other <laughs> guy was in loads of space. <laughs> which which particular guy? One of them. Not okay. Okay, <laughs> that'll do for now. Uh, ball goes out of play on the far side here. Argentina two, South Korea one. An own goal and one for Higuain as well. His first of the World Cup for the Real Madrid striker. Uh, but Maradona's side conceded in injury time just before the break, and it's been uh, a bit more tense for the South Americans in this second half. Maradona 
has been out of some but once the slow motion the TV where he's got a ring in his finger and he brought it when he just kissed it and maybe hoping for some divine intervention perhaps to help his side go through remember a win here might be enough to see Argentina into the second round depending on what happens between Greece and Nigeria later on Mascarano wins possession in midfield for Argentina dispossessing Kim Jong-woo and now a bit of room for Tevez uh, sorry for Messi on the right hand side now into Tevez it's a 1-2 back to Messi used to sprint to keep it in play just does by the byline he's back outside the penalty area now right hand side little drag back for himself rolls the ball under the studs and then a smooth pass back to Guti Gutierrez, who's up from right back, infield to Mascherano, launches a high ball, that must be a, a handball from uh, Ainsley on the far side to control it, the free kick is given, and uh, it's going to be a yellow card for Gabriel Ainsley, and another yellow card for Argentina, they've been racking them up in this game, Mascherano, Gutierrez, Ainsley, all in the second half. You know, it's like they're going to make a change, Sergio Aguero. And that, that's what I'd be doing if I was Sergio Aguero. Imagine if your father-in-law was the future father was the manager. <laughs> I'm saying, get me on the pitch. You want to go? I'll get you on. Get me on. You can imagine the sort of guilt trip. You know, you just say, you, you, your grandkids will be so disappointed <laughs> if, if their daddy doesn't get to play at the World Cup. Well, that's the situation for Aguero, whose family connection's not good enough to get him in the starting eleven, But he's got to come on here in place of Tevez for the remaining... 15 minutes in Johannesburg Aguero who's not just in the team because he's related now to Maradona he scores an awful lot of goals for Atletico Madrid and he's got a good record at international level as well almost one goal every two games but here come Korea Park Ji Sung the Manchester United man who's cut his hair a bit tighter for this World Cup tries to weave his way into the penalty area he can't get around Gutierrez and uh, it's picked up by the goalkeeper Romero he's cut his hair a bit tighter for this World Cup what's wrong with Amish Coffee here? No, I'm just saying that he's, he's cut it a bit tighter, as in it is shorter. I, I didn't want to say that he's cut it all off. I didn't want to say that he left it long. He's, he's cut it a bit tighter. As uh, Ar Argentina goalkeeper Romero comes out of his penalty area, but he knew what he was doing. He's launched a huge ball down the other end, which would have dipped under the crossbar, would you believe, had the... <laughs> the Korean goalkeeper Jung not been standing in just the right position it bounced once I think Jung was hoping it would go over the crossbar but it dipped as this ball of the World Cup tends to do but Romero a nervous moment for him the Argentina keeper as he had to come out of his penalty area Argentina survived they still lead 2-1 and uh, here's Aguero his first touch and he's inside the centre circle with Messi. Brilliant change of direction by Messi. Back to Aguero. Back to Messi again. Into the penalty area. Barcelona's Messi. Goes for goal once. Hits the post. And into the back of the net. And they have got a, set, a third goal. It's a second for Higuain. But Lionel Messi was absolutely magical in creating that goal. And Argentina restore their two-goal lead. A second for Higuain. Argentina three. South Korea won Messi got the ball in the middle of the pack used his body strength held a few players off swayed one way swayed the other played a great one two with Aguero a great awareness from Aguero hit the shot that keep great save and then he's hit it by hit the inside of the post got across the line Aguero's any good thought sent the forwards to follow in and tapped it in into empty net that's created by for me Messi and Aguero great Aguero is very similar to Tevez in the way he is his body shape the way he plays and it was great awareness and you know again I think I think we see the both sides defending not very good attacking probably the best in the tournament yeah. I think a brilliant attack and a poor defence if you add it up it equals excitement and that's what we've had in Johannesburg today where Gonzalo Higuain has doubled his international goal tally he had two to his name before today he's now up to four and Argentina are back comfortable their fans on the far side are back waving their uh, looks like t-shirts, some of them are scarves on the far side, certainly many of them will be wearing their scarves in the cool temperatures here at Soccer City but Messi just showed star quality there to set up Argentina's third goal I think me and you should come into every game, kind of, that's eight goals in three games I've had we are on fire, yeah uh, there is by the way for listeners a tally uh, a sort of golden boot for commentators and who, who gets the most over the tournament uh, more to come on that I'm sure throughout the event as Romero, the Argentina goalkeeper, clears away down, and this could be a chance. Higuain's on a hat trick, tries to lob the keeper, wrong option, and uh, Jung was able to just backpedal and catch the ball. That should have been his hat trick. Yeah. He waited for the ball to bounce. He was clean through, 
and a little dolly to the keeper try to chip him but it was a just smash it there that would have been his hat chip if he smashed it Di Michaelis stretches inside the penalty area and clears away for Argentina we've just been given the official attendance there are over 82,000 people inside this stadium and they've been treated to uh, well what an entertaining game so far if only for the way Maradona controlled the ball with his, his back heel on the left boot when it came at him high in the air and, and you know you always fear for former players when they're wearing leather shoes and they try to control the ball it, it's an embarrassment waiting to happen not with Maradona no listen Maradona could have played in slippers <laughs> bare feet flip flops anything I think he could have a concrete <laughs> block welded to his foot he'd still be able to Wellington <laughs> Winkle Pickers let's get, get a few more <laughs> Winkle Pickers controlled on the Winkle uh, oh the picker <laughs> here's Park Ji Sung on the left hand side the Korean captain passes it back into midfield and this is Lee Jung Soo and has he been fouled by Maxi Rodriguez it's going to be a free kick to the Koreans they won't want to pick up any more yellow cards here Argentina uh, already three today and Gutierrez the man who'll miss the, the final group game Maxi Rodriguez is being spoken to uh, by the Belgian official but that's all it's going to be just a word so Maradona right out on the edge of his technical area preparing to make another change I think he wants to make it before this free kick is taken he won't get a chance to do so swung in from the left hand side headed by Mascarano up into the air Argentina haven't fully cleared it away but they will do now as a free kick is awarded and taken rapidly by Messi and this is Sergio Aguero bursting into the Korean half lays it off to Higuain Messi involved again scoops it into the area Aguero from a tight angle back into the centre Higuain's hat-trick oh, it's fantasy football from Argentina Gonzalo Higuain scores the first hat-trick of World Cup 2010 and there's one common denominator with all three goals is that a certain Lionel Messi was involved in the build-up for all of them Argentina 4 South Korea 1 I don't think we'll see a better goal at the World Cup you know all tournaments they took a quick free kick first and foremost I thought it was from their own place I think they had a bit of an advantage there but they broke 4 on 2 Messi has then got to the edge of the box and scooped the ball into um, um, Aguero Aguero who's played the ball with his outside of his foot to the back post and Aguero's headed it like all good strikers should do back across where it come from into the corner of the net and it's just a world class goal what attacking player we see here well that was real serious quality and Lionel Messi looked every inch the player he does at club level and there have been questions can he do for Argentina what he does for Barcelona we've now seen him play almost two games of this World Cup I think the answer is becoming clear yes it is but let's, let's not get that carried away he's only, been, he's only played against Nigeria and Korea but he is the best player in the world and if he to, to be in the ilk of Maradona he has to then do it like Maradona did yep, it for, yep. for all the tournament but as he started for me at the minute he's the best player in the tournament yeah, he's not scored yet at South Africa 2010, Lionel Messi, but he has really put on a masterclass against the Koreans here. And Argentina leading 4-1. They could be uh, already in the second round by the end of today. So the change has been made by Maradona, and Bolatti has come on for Higuain, so the three goals will be enough for him today. And, uh, well, he picked six strikers in the squad. I don't think any of them have disappointed Diego Maradona so far. But with that performance it's going to be very difficult to drop Higuain. So Balati is a more, well, he's more of a midfielder. So Aguero and Messi will be more of a front two now. And uh, possession with the Koreans on the left-hand side. Lee Young-Pyo, once of Tottenham, 10 yards outside the penalty area. You know, it's 4-1 now, and Argentina seem out of sight for quite some time in the second half. This has been a closer contest when it was just 2-1. It's turning points, the miss, the miss of the game. Yeah. In the midst of the game Yom he should have scored he should have scored the massive turning point heads drop thinking we should be on level turns Argentina got up there and the score it's games hinge on decisions no matter where you go in the world what level you play at games hinge on big decisions he should have scored well Argentina 4 South Korea won the scoreline here coming up the afternoon game of the World Cup is Greece against Nigeria uh, we can get some team news on that game now from David Oates
and there are three changes for Greece. Got, they've gone for pace rather than height. Liverpool's Karaguni, uh, uh, Kyriakos and Papastathopoulos start in defence. Salpengidis in attack. Two changes for Nigeria. Obina and Obasi make way for Kalu Uche and Peter Odomwingi. Thank you very much, David. Both those sides uh, face a real catch-up now uh, to get back into contention in this group. But uh, they'll probably be pleased that, that it looks like Korea are going to not pick up any points today and they will remain catchable. Uh, by the way, Lee Dong Gook, uh, who had an uh, unsuccessful spell at Middlesbrough, let's put it that way, he has come on as a substitute in place of Bolton's Lee Chung Yong. So Lee Dong Gook, one Lee replacing another for the South Koreans. Quarter to Argentina, left hand side out in the sunshine as this shadow continues to creep across the enormous bowl that is Soccer City. But where they take that corner on the far side, they are illuminated, and Argentina have possession with Gabriel Ainsay, tries to scoop one forward with none of the delicacy that Messi showed in the build-up uh, to the third goal for Higuain, the fourth for Argentina. It was like Tiger Woods with a little loft wedge, and he just scooped it into the penalty area so delicately, and Aguero was there to set up Higuain. It's probably... What, what do you think, Robbie? Best goal of the World Cup so far? Yeah, th th that'll take some beats in the way they attack with pace, penetration... You know, driving at the Korean defence. You know, so it was, yeah, for me, the best goal of the World Cup so far. And we've got just over five minutes of normal time to go. I wonder if Argentina will make it five goals. This is Park Ji Sung on the far side, up towards uh, Park Chu Young. And then the cross from the Manchester United Park is into the penalty area, but Maxi Rodriguez is well positioned to clear away the Liverpool man. Back out towards uh, Park Ji Sung, and he stretches along the turf but can't get control of the ball. Here's the substitute, Balati, passing it back to Bordiso, who also came on as a sub. It's worth uh, reminding listeners who may not have been with us in the first half that uh, Argentina lost one of the more exp uh, experienced players, Walter Samuel, to injury earlier on in the game, and they're without the experienced one, Sebastian Veron, as well, who's picked up a calf injury, so these things may add up as collateral for Argentina as the tournament progresses, Di Maria has possession in a left fullback position and the blue and white striped Argentina jerseys are going to play their way out of trouble no hoofing the ball upfield it's uh, short passes all the way up to Aguero and his jersey has been pulled and that's a free kick and Argentina can relieve the pressure and stretch back into the Korean half, Argentina 4 South Korea 1, Robbie Savage well, it's all about options for the man on the ball. You see the better team in this tournament, Germany, Argentina, Holland. You know, the man on the ball needs options. And in this Argentinian te team, the man on the ball has three or four options at any one given time. And that's that's the signal of a good team and good players. So, yeah, th these after this performance, you know, England got to hope that they win the group. Just looking at Maradona's body language, he's the arms folded across his chest the suit which is maybe a little tight fitting around the back there and he's got the, the sort of shoulders back sort of head raised a little bit defiant but he knows you know he's had so much criticism from big respected names in football Pele's had a go at him uh, Platini has had a go at him they can't really argue with the results two wins out of two and this performance leaky defence or not Argentina are a serious contender for this World Cup and here comes Messi again over the halfway line releasing Aguero with the orange boots wonderful change of direction sells another dummy Aguero into the penalty area is eventually tackled and he nearly went all the way from the halfway line into the penalty area free flowing football and ever so easy on the eye yeah great play from Aguero great driving run and he can you know he can come off and say I told you I told you, Mr. Father-in-law, <laughs> I'd I'll I'll, I'll help us get a more convincing victory. Would you like Maradona as your father-in-law? I mean, if, if, if things went a bit sour, I, I could just see I could see things being... I don't know. I think that might be a little bit too close for comfort. Here come Korea on the attack. Park Ji Sung is in the penalty area. Oh, he's gone to ground. To be fair to him, he's not looking for a penalty. Immediately picks himself up as a Di Michaelis passes the ball out of defence. And Argentina get it up to Aguero once more. And he tries to spin away from a tackle on the halfway line. Loses the ball. And this is Cho Yong Hyung who comes over the halfway line, gives it to Lee Jung Su, midway into the Argentina half, onto Kim Jong Woo in midfield, and a bit of space on the far side. Two players wait for it in the centre, but the Koreans need to get across into the box. They nearly lose possession to Di Maria, and uh, South Korea turn and will go all the way back to the halfway line. And Argentina have dealt with that very well. Argentina 4, South Korea 1. And we've had a hat-trick now at the World Cup for Higuain.
going back to your point on Maradona, Pele and, and Platini yeah. having a go at him, I think, you know, Pele, I think Pele can have the right to question. Listen, Platini was a great player, but for me, not in the same league as, as Maradona. I've seen them both play. Platini was, you know, was a great player, but well, there you go, Maradona, single-handedly, yeah. for me, won the World Cup with, for, for Argentina, and he is, you know... The thing that amazes me, people have an opinion on people who have never really tried managing. You know, it's okay for Mr. Platini to do what he does, but yeah, yeah. he's never tried managing France. Uh-oh, for Korea. Here comes Messi over the halfway line. Aguero's ahead of him. Messi almost into the penalty area. Succession of little spins and pirouettes, but eventually the ball has been taken away from him and Lee Jung-soo can clear the ball away. Back to the Maradona. Here's what he said in response to Pele's criticism. He says, Pele should go back to the museum and to Platini, the UEFA president, he said, we all know how the French are, and Platini is French, and he believes he is better than the rest. And Diego Maradona doesn't take criticism lying down. Well, Maradona is allowed to say that, because what he's oh, achieved yeah. and what he's done in the game, and he has had, you know, the desire to manage his nation, who he loves, and I think he's, listen, he's got him to a World Cup, he's had a tremendous start here, and he is, Diego, listen, he is Diego <laughs> Maradona. Yeah. He is a legendary figure, and uh, there's, a, there's a flag near the corner flag, the far left side there, a picture of Maradona alongside Che Guevara, and he really sees himself as that kind of iconic figure. Uh, possession with uh, Korea on the left-hand side. They try to come forward, and Lee is taken to the ground. It will be a free kick, but you've got to think the time has run out for them. 30 seconds to go, three goals behind here in Johannesburg. Uh, goal difference could well be a factor as they... I mean, you have to assume now Argentina will go on and win this group and then between South Korea, Greece and Nigeria to see who joins them. Now you look at Messi taking people on and I just wonder what that would be like to actually taking somebody on. I've never done that in my career, took somebody on. <laughs> Here's the free kick played into the penalty area. Argentina have plenty of defenders back there. Bolatti is able to clear the ball out of the penalty area and uh, possession back with the South Koreans but inside their own half with Cho Yong-hyun who... Uh, did very well against Didier Drogba and a friendly against the Ivory Coast in March. He's fared less well against Gonzalo Higuain and hasn't been able to stop the Real Madrid man at claim a hat-trick here this afternoon. This is Park Ji Sung, left-footed shot from the corner angle of the penalty area. Uh, it probably was on target. Goalkeeper Sergio Romero got well down to his right-hand side to make the save. You even see Maradona there celebrating with his <laughs> fist in the air, punching his heart when the keeper makes a the save there. It just proves, you know what, well, his spirit, his, his passion for the game yeah. is just second to none. He, he is heart and soul football, isn't he, Diego Maradona? Heart and soul, Argentina. And as uh, you know, Mark Bugatch mentioned in the build-up, at this level, do the players need to be coached how to play or do they just need to be motivated and given the self-belief that they can go and perform on this, the biggest stage in world football? And Argentina's performance... And remember, it's South Korea who won their opening game 2-0, who were judged as maybe being dark horses in this tournament uh, but they have been turned over here today as coming forward now is uh, Lee dong but no way towards the Argentina penalty area and Ince up towards Messi and Messi complains that he wasn't given a shout that there was a defender on his back as he loses the ball could you imagine sitting in the change room and Maradona coming up to you and saying you're a good player son could you imagine the, could you imagine <laughs> the could belief you feel? Yeah. imagine you're yeah. a Maradona, you're a good player, son. <laughs> Thanks, Diego. Yeah. He's going to the pitch for a million dollars. Absolutely. And, you know, we do see him as a bit of a cartoon character in recent years, Maradona. He is a god in his homeland. This is Aguero into the area. What an effort. Flashes in front of the face of goal. And it was within inches of creeping inside the far post. He created space where there seemed to be so little, and from a narrow angle, that was so close. Brilliant play from Aguero. For me, he's been better than Tevez. When he's come, he's made a huge impact. Aguero's always been a real... Well, hang on, the final whistle has just flown here, and Aguero, who, right since a young teenager, was a prodigy, made his club debut at just 15. He has played his part. Maradona will feel justified in bringing on his son-in-law here in the second half because Argentina pulled away from a game that, you know, up to the hour mark was still pretty close and Korea was still in it. But Maradona, full of self-purpose now, comes onto the pitch, arms around each player one by one. He is absolutely delighted and he is proving himself that he can perform not just as a player in a world stage we know that in the past but as an international manager he's pulled two wins out of two and his side have scored five goals in their opening two matches 
I think we've seen the two sides of Argentina, like we said before the game. Attacking prowess second to none. Defensively, very, very shaky. The game hinged at 2-1. When Hyun missed a great chance for, for Korea, he should have scored. Argentina went up the other end and scored. 3-1, 4-1. Messi was fantastic. Aguero, for me, it was a great decision for Maradona to put him on. That sealed the game for him. So, yeah, the two sides. Would I fear Argentina? Defensively, no. Attacking, yes. Huge hug from Maradona to Messi. And they may come from different eras. But they are performing together here in tandem at the 2010 World Cup. And Argentina will be in the second round should the game between Greece and Nigeria later on be a draw or should Nigeria win it. So, Robbie, can they go all the way? Do we have to take them seriously? Yeah, you have to take them seriously just because of the, the players they've, they've, they have in, at their disposal. Defensively, Samuel could be a big loss. Guterres is missing the next game. So, yeah, I think you have to take them seriously just because of the players they have. But defensively... Very, very shaky. Higuain's hat-trick, the own goal as well to help them on their way. What a second game from Argentina. Argentina 4, South Korea 1.